Hello, this is Ray Mota, and welcome to another edition of The Hot Seat. Joining me today is Mike Marcelling, who's Senior Vice President of Strategy and Marketing for Juniper Networks. Mike, welcome to The Hot Seat. Always a pleasure. And I think this is your fourth or fifth. I know, I know. I'm getting used to it. I think we have an award for that <laughs> here, because you like the pain. Yeah, sounds good. Well, good. Well, why don't we get started? Earlier this month, you had some major announcements around the NFV space, right? A variety of them. Could you give us a recap before we get into this particular Hot Seat? Yeah, as you know, NFV is kind of a huge transformation that service providers are starting to undertake. And we really saw the transformation happening on three different dimensions. Mm -hmm. One is around operational, you know, how do they operate the network mm -hmm. uh, and, and applications in an NFV environment. The next was around business models, and then the last was around technology. So all three of these are areas of transformation that they have to undertake. Right. On the operational side, what we announced is something we uh, are calling Junos DevOps, DevOps, which is a set of tools that really kind of bring together the IP and the IT world, mm -hmm. uh, allowing you know, service providers to run their network in a much more fluid and dynamic way. So that really gets at the operational yeah, challenge that they have. Yeah. We also announced something we call Contrail Cloud, mm -hmm. which is essentially Contrail and an OpenStack distribution mm -hmm. and a fully validated architecture, not just with Juniper networking equipment, but mm -hmm. also with some of the leading storage and compute vendors that are out there. So it's essentially the ability to put together mm -hmm. a full stack and have a turnkey cloud environment. Right. That really helps them transform their business model in, in turning up clouds. Okay. And then the last area was technology, and that and the big headliner there was the virtual MX, yes, yes. which which basically takes our flagship routing platform mm -hmm. and virtualizes it, so service providers can run that in a cloud environment. Right. Now let's uh, go deeper into that last piece there because that seems like a very bold move for Juniper. The MX has been like the darling child for mm -hmm. Juniper over some time. But uh, in talking to some Wall Street, could you help clarify? Uh, the concerns maybe of cannibalizing your existing revenue base on the MX? Well, certainly, I mean, the MX, as you said, has been a great product for us. It's it's our flagship product, the leading revenue product uh, of the company. Right. Uh, and it's deployed, you know, hundreds of service providers and, and you know, thousands of enterprises around right. the world. So it's been a very successful product for us. And we uh, expect that to continue. Right. What we saw is the opportunity to deliver essentially what's a new form factor for the MX. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, we have a continuum today of, MX5, which is a small kind of 20 gig box, right. all the way up to the MX2020, which is an 80 terabit box. Terabit, yeah. And so what we see this new virtualized form factor doing is really giving a new level of agility to service providers mm -hmm. and probably addressing that, you know, 50 gig up to 100 gig, maybe even higher than that, but, right. okay. you know, that space. Um, whereas when you're up to the levels of scale and performance that you need mm -hmm. in a backbone or at you know a, a universal edge type of form yeah. factor, you're going to need that terabit capacity. Terabit. So we actually see it as a very nice continuum for us. Right. As, you, as you'd expect, vast majority of our revenue comes from the high end. Right. So the low end is really an opportunity for us to bring new solutions, help service providers work in a different way. Right. Uh, and so we, we actually see them as very complementary. Right, so the, the opportunities outweigh some of the threats, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, there's been other competitions that have announced a mm -hmm. variety of virtual type routing, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the things that was important in that announcement, right, compared to the competition, you emphasized being the first to be carrier grade. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that exactly? Yeah, I mean, essentially, you know, we've got a long history and pedigree in building carrier class routers. Mm -hmm. um, that that talks about features, reliability, performance, all of these attributes rolled together. At the time that we announced, we didn't see anything on the market that, that fit the bill mm -hmm. uh, in doing that. Right. Um, again, you know, I think the reality is the solution is going to be a continuum of virtualized form factors mm -hmm. at the lower end and then if you want to call them physical form factors, right. driven by purpose-built silicon at the okay. high end. And the beauty of our solution is it's the same feature set, the same operational experience. Mm -hmm. And so all of these service providers that have invested over the past five to ten years bringing Juniper routers into their environment, mm -hmm. building the right OSS, BSS hooks, right. are now going to see the same feature same set, features. the same operational experience that right. they are accustomed to. Right. And that's not something that we you know, saw out there as we right. as we came out with the virtual okay. MX. Now, what would be, uh, I guess, some of the use cases that you see that get you excited about? Yeah. And I, any I, customers as well in that process. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, we we are going to go to GA um, uh, early in, in the first quarter of 15, but mm -hmm. we've had the virtual MX in many customers' hands. In fact, we had an you know, at &T, oh, cool. uh, was kind enough to provide us a quote because they've been, you mm -hmm. know, uh, working with the virtual MX for about four or five months now. Nice. Um so some of the some of the um, use cases, 
really center around, well, they're probably two classes. Mm -hmm. One, the, the first thing we all naturally do is we say, well, what am I using a physical router for today that I could use a virtualized router right. for? That's kind of the, the most basic set of use cases. And as I said, probably for some of the lower bandwidth applications, mm -hmm. there could be a real opportunity to bring the virtual MX into, into the fold. Right. Okay. So that's one. But, but really what I see a little bit more excited about is some of the things that uh, were virtualized router can do that maybe a physical router couldn't do mm -hmm. or where, where the business model wasn't such that it could do it. Right. I'll give you a couple examples. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in my past, of course, mm -hmm. I was responsible for uh, um, uh, the product portfolio at mm -hmm. Verizon that right. was the global uh, IPMPLS network. Mm -hmm. And we would deal with many large you know, Fortune 100 type of, of customers right. that were global. And they would often come and say, hey, I'm opening up a new location in this new country. Mm -hmm. Can you bring your network there? And that was always a tough business yes. case to make because there was a big barrier to entry. I'd have to figure out, okay, i got to buy a, another big router. Right. I've got to deploy that. I've got to homologate that. I've got to go through all those steps. Right. Now, with a virtualized form factor, I can. all I need is a server that right. sits in that country. Right. I can turn up a virtualized instance in minutes, literally, nice. and then I can bring on that one or two customer connections that I need. Right. If that grows over time, it may make sense for me to transition to a physical form right. factor. Right. And as I said, that's a very easy operational transition with the MX. Right. But that was something that you, know, you just couldn't prove out the business case in the old world. So that's a new area. Okay. The other one I'd say is um, service providers are always looking to do more and more managed services. Right. Okay. And virtualized solutions, it's not just virtualized routers, it's right. virtualized security, security functions. It's, it's a bunch of right. things. Um, today, as you know, that's those are boxes that sit on the premises. The mm -hmm. service provider manages those. They truck roll them to get them there. Mm -hmm. They may have to truck roll them to maintain them or to swap right. them out. If you bring the more the more you bring those into the cloud, the better the economics start to look. Right. The better the stickiness looks for the service provider because right. now the enterprise or the SMB or even the consumer is that much more reliant on the service provider's network, which puts them in a position of really being important to their right. customer. Now, um, when we look at the virtualization compared to dedicated versus virtual, could you give us any visibility on your plans on how do you price this? Yeah, you know, we, we want to be aggressive for the, for the use cases where we see the virtual form factor mm -hmm. really, really being strong. Right. And so we're going to price it as, as a very low barrier to entry. I think you're going to mm -hmm. see, you're going to see um, kind of a smooth continuum as you go up the bandwidth curve mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, if, if you want a one gigabit solution or a 10 gigabit right. solution, probably the virtual MX is gonna be the best option you have out there. Right. Um, as you step up, the the physics of x86 versus custom silicon mean that x86 probably isn't the right solution, so you'll probably you know top out on the pricing right. or, or cross over cross on the pricing over. to where a physical box, yes. you, know, in the, you know, when you're starting to get into hundreds of gigabits or the terabit range, the physical box is gonna make more sense yeah. for you. And so it's gonna be a pretty smooth continuum. We wanna take, we wanna take pricing off the table, we yeah. want the, the best tool for the right job to right. be chosen. Good, I think that's a smart move. Uh, is this product shipping? I mean, what's the time frame on it? Well, the, the, so the couple products I mentioned, I talked about Junos DevOps and Contrail Cloud. Those are actually mm -hmm. available today. And right. the virtual MX, we've got it in some customers' labs, but it'll be shipping GA in first quarter of uh, 2015. Well, you're officially off the hot seat. Appreciate it, Mike. Enjoyed it. With Mike Marcellin, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this version of the hot seat.